Okay. Hi, welcome back to my channel. Good to have you here. Good to be back. Um, I'm going to talk about favorite, well, not just favorites, books I read this month. Um, and some movies I watched, things like that. It was a good month. I turned 25, um, fully in my mid 20s now. Okay, guys, no. First book I finished this year was YN by Esther Yi. It's been a while since I've read this, um, but I tried to write down some of my thoughts after finishing it. Overall, I liked this. It was good. I'm glad I read it. I would recommend it to some people, but overall, it kind of missed the mark. Um, it was really close, really, really close. This follows um, a, a woman, a young woman, <laughs> who gets obsessed with um, gets obsessed with a K-pop star um, called Moon. And he, she's living in Germany at the time, is like, you know, K-pop is stupid, blah, 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 gets introduced to it. Um, and before you know it, you're on kind of a crazy ride um, down the path that she goes with this kind of this fandom, this obsession, and ultimately kind of like a search for meaning in her life. Um, what makes this distinct, I think, though, is the writing. It's extremely, um, I don't want to say dry. It's very matter of fact. I read this as an audiobook. The narrator is like very flat, dry, monotone voice, and I think it works for the story. I don't know, the entire story, like, it, it felt very alien to me. It felt very alien-like. So I enjoyed that. I just think for, with the audiobook, it's, like, a bit more difficult to um, understand where you are in the story um, and just, like, find your grounding. Um, and there's very little grounding in this story. I think that's kind of the point. A little bit more coherence would have helped um, kind of can like geal this story together for me. I love the like themes at play in this in this story though. Um, I I knew I would, and I listened to the author's interview with Jalen from the Bar in the Bookcase. That was a really really good podcast interview. This story needed to be made. I love. I I did really like it. Now that I'm I have some time from it, but it wasn't perfect. Let's say that. Um, I would recommend this for people who were fangirls in the mid-2000s on Tumblr. Absolutely, this is for you. If you read, if you got like addicted to fanfiction, it's for you. Um, well, that's okay. That's actually part of the thing is the auth. I totally forgot. A key component of this story is that um, the narrator starts writing fanfiction about Moon. And that's also kind of where the um, uh, uncertainty slash unreliability of the story comes into play because um, you don't really know what's real, what's fiction, does it even matter? Next book I read was Check Out 19 by Claire Louise Bennett. I have a really beautiful cover of it that I got from Ireland. Um, but I don't have it with me right now. It's with a friend. Um, I loved this. 
I loved this and I should have known I would love it. Um, I, to me, uh, this book is really in line with um, Sheila Hetty's writing. Instantly when I was reading Check Out 19, I was like, what is this like? And it was Sheila Hetty. This is no plot, just vibes. It's just kind of following um, the, the narrator. I would say that it's, it's I, I think it's explicitly autobiographical. Um, and just her experiences with writing and like making meaning out of being a writer, um, being a creative person and just trying to make sense of herself, you know, all the good stuff. I don't think I loved the first and last chapters. That's what I remember. I found them kind of whatever. Um, everything else I really liked. Her writing style is extremely quirky <laughs> okay not like okay maybe not the style but just it's not like she's using crazy words and like uh crazy punctuation or something like that or like format uh it's just like this th there's these long stream of consciousness sentences that are like a lot of the sentences are half a page maybe even an entire page long it's like comma phrase after comma phrase after comma phrase so there's this like kind of uh rolling tide rhythm to it once you get into it it's nice um and we're in her head a lot you know talking about all these little tiny little details then randomly it'll switch to a completely different topic quirky in that sense and um the narrator is also, it's like, it's feels very like you're opening up someone's diary where they're talking about like really small little uh, altercations or things that happen in life in during the day that like kind of hurt you a little bit or bruise you. And then later in your diary, you're like extremely dramatic and you're like, that was horrible, blah, 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 blah. It feels like that. So what I'm trying to say is that if you, it's one of those books where like if the narration is you find it annoying in that moment to read i would say don't continue because it doesn't change <laughs> it's like you either have to be charmed by it um by her writing style and kind of where she's taking you or you're not like that and i wasn't super charmed within the first paragraph but i mean first chapter but afterwards i um I don't know if it was first chapter or first couple of pages, I don't remember, but it is really good. Um, I found, and one thing that I liked about this, this collection is you're up in the clouds with her, but it's not pretentious. And I like that the story is like on the topics of like literature and creativity, being a creative but it's still very aware of like the reality of life. Like there's, um, I think the book really talks about um, what it means to try to be a creative when you don't come from money and like connections, resources, all that kind of stuff, like what that takes. Um, yeah, and I found that to be like really, uh, realistic grounded once again yeah i loved it um i want to read pond her other book now okay taking a break from talking about the books that i did read and finish i'm gonna briefly go over some other books first one was the fraud by zadie smith um i started this on an audiobook and i thought it would be cool because it's narrated by zadie smith and I love hearing her talk in her lectures and stuff. Um, and actually, I've been motivated to read the um, the fraud because of a particular interview she gave recently um, at a city arts and lectures series talk in San Francisco. Um, it's in podcast format that I listen to. I'll link it, um, and it really re in light 
um, enlightened my love for Zadie Smith and she just has great takes. So I was excited to read The Fraud. I will can eventually read this, but I will do it in a physical copy just because the audiobook was really not working for me. And I do think it's because of Zadie Smith's narration. It's hard to understand her and it's not necessarily because of her accent, but she does do like different accents for the characters. And I was like, no, it's too much. Like you're not, an, you're not an actor. That's that. And then this book I DNF'd, um, I picked it up from the library. I started the first couple pages and I just really didn't enjoy um, the story. Uh, it, yeah. The, the one thing in particular was like, we're following this Palestinian American uh, woman. She's living in the, in the US, I think in the South. She is married, has kids is like established in her life and but is like still deeply unhappy that's kind of like the core i think of where the story is going and then i just like the first scene is her getting ready to host her in-laws for um like a weekly dinner and the way the the mother-in-law was described just felt so kind of like ridiculous to me that me personally just like the way it felt like she was just like so like vilified in kind of like a like Disney cartoon style way that felt like it didn't resonate with me. Um, but it could for other people, which is why um, I'm bringing it up. And you know what? If you read this, you know the types of books that I like and you're like, no girl, you will actually like this. Let me know. Um, and maybe I'll read it. I got the Sunny's Book Truck new t-shirt. I love their designs, like CJ's designs so much, but I was waiting for the one that was, that was like me and this one, it's so cute. It's like a little book tour um, style, like or like band tour thing. The back has like, um, okay, you're not really going to be able to see it. I'll show it in another clip. Yeah, I love the colors, um, just came in the mail, and I was like, I need to wear this. This is my red cardigan that I thrifted, um, at the end of the summer, kind of a classic staple for me this year and then these are the um these are just like straight leg jeans they're the levi's 50190s i love this fit i have the same one in white um and then just my blundstones my bag for the night i'm staying over at my friend's house in the city so got the goods um yeah I think this outfit's pretty cute. I really like the colors make me really happy. The Late Americans by Brandon Taylor, which I got used, I think, for a great deal. Or maybe I found on the street. To be honest, I don't really know. This was good. This was, this was really good. It wasn't perfect and it's really hard for me to try to explain why. I also just, I'm gonna take this cover off. I really don't like it. Um, this is so much cuter. This was highly anticipated. I've read Real Life by Brandon Taylor. I read his Substack periodically. This is a story that follows um, multiple different characters uh, in Iowa. Iowa Writers Workshop thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's based in Iowa City. And each chapter is from the perspective of a different character. The majority of the characters are in Iowa City um, in grad school. Variety of different programs, some of them being math, some of them being 
dance, it's not like, or poetry, um, you know, a variety of things. And then there's some characters that um, are like affiliated through relationships with kind of the grad school world, but um, are not necessarily grad students themselves. Some of the characters where you have their perspective from a previous chapter will show up um, as another person in another person in another chapter. Eventually, kind of like a lot of the characters that you've been getting familiar with kind of come together. I like that concept. I think there were just there was too much stuff going on in this, honestly. These characters felt like they should have just been put into, put together into one character. It feels like it was just kind of like, okay, let me pick two contradicting characteristics about this person, put them together, and now it's like a multifaceted character. And like, that's not necessarily the case. And I think some for a character to feel really fleshed out and multidimensional, it, we need more time with them and we just don't get that in in this there's just kind of too much going on <laughs> um feels a little crowded and you're kind of getting like a little bit under the surface with each character but not enough yeah i don't know i just i think it was kind of like a kill your darlings thing like you there just needed to be less characters i really liked this quote of the character that works at the meat processing plant is like talking to this guy that he's dating that is like vegetarian and um hates what hates the his job um but is also supportive of the death penalty for like the mass shooters anyways the quote is he has one Quote, he had wanted to ask why it was that people found it so much easier to extend charity to the anonymous herd beast, beasts of the field than to other people. Loving people was hard. It was difficult sometimes to believe that they were good. It was hard to know them, but that didn't mean you could just go on without trying. Okay, last book that I read this past month. Um, It was so bad, and this was a hate read. I will be honest, I do hate read. Um, would I have been happier if I just DNF'd this? Yeah. I knew very early on I didn't like this book and I continued to read it because I felt like the book is very close to getting something right and it has a lot of potential. Um, and it fails, but I wanted to keep growing one to see if it continues to fail throughout the entire thing. Two, I feel like when you want something to be good and it's not, it's, I find it valuable to keep reading to like then be able to articulate what exactly I don't like about it. Um, maybe not exactly, but being closer to be able to understand it. The book in question is Small Fires, an Epic in the Kitchen by Rebecca May Johnson. I was excited, nonfiction, food writing, let's go. Um, I am on the lookout for good food writing that's like beyond just like an article online um, because I get, I just feel like the best food writing I've read is Anthony Bourdain's Kitchen Confidential and I love that book but like there has to be other good things like that out there in contemporary sense um not that Kitchen Confidential isn't contemporary but like it's been a while since it was first published it's not necessarily memoir it's not like true essays it okay this is I feel like I don't I don't know this feels kind of mean but it it's what's been going through my head this entire time so the author is coming from a place of uh having worked in restaurants I think for like a decade cooks a lot just as a home cook and 
uh, is in academia, wrote uh, a PhD um, roughly on the different translations of the Odyssey. And she mentions um, the like recent, was it 2017 uh, English translation for the first time by a woman of the Odyssey. That part's super interesting. But the effort of trying to like connect the topic of her PhD to cooking in general is so laborious and just does not work. Is it laborious or laborious? Whatever, however you say it. It just, it's such a reach and and that's only when when she does manage to like make it clear she's trying to make that connection. Most of this book is like random thoughts, <laughs> like extremely rough draft notes. And this is the part that feels, I don't know if it feels mean, but it genuinely feels like while this person was writing their dissertation, they decided to also jot down some notes um, critical thinking notes while they were also cooking dinner for themselves and then somehow managed to get it published. <laughs> like, for context, this book uses the term big dick energy twice before the first half of the book, like unironically. Or if it is meant to be ironic, I don't think it worked um yeah it's it's bad um and yeah the writing is very trying it's like that kind of like contemporary academic writing um that makes a lot of like proclamations um and you know it that works for academic articles and books that take the time to like convince like argue their case but that doesn't happen here. It's upsetting to me because I wanted it to be good. Um, it's also one of those books where it deceivingly has a few good quotes. Like I wrote down some quotes that I liked from it, but it's not good. <laughs> What's difficult is like, I really love food. I really love cooking. I feel really strongly about it. And I think that there is a way to talk and write about what food means to us and like to make meaning out of food and cooking um so i wanted this to to work and yeah anyways food writing is hard i i i think good food writing is hard um i didn't like tastemakers which i read last year as well um by mayuka sen i think is their name um i'll put the the book up but that was also really bad. And I'd love to know if there's um, any kind of book really centering on food that you, you like. I would love to know and try it out. Those are all the books. I want to talk about some movies that I watched as well. I haven't wa been watching movies lately and I was craving it. It was kind of, it's like a resolution for me. Number one, I watched The Holiday um, when it was on Netflix. So good. It was, I mean, I don't even know what to say. It's just kind of like the perfect rom-com. That, and then I also watched um, My Best Friend's Wedding with my friends. That was also the best rom-com. Those are two really good ones. Very different too. The Holiday is great because it has that, like, that 2005-2006 vibe that we just, uh, we don't have anymore. And then Jude Law just, oh my god, he, he slayed. Like, and also just Hugh Grant found dead in a ditch. Like, I just, so much better. Just such a fun, fun movie. My Best Friend's Wedding was great. Julia Roberts, like, 
is like the hottest person ever in that movie. I want to be her so badly. Like, yeah. She just has so much swag in that movie. Um, she's also kind of the villain. <laughs> Once again, Cameron Diaz also in that movie and she does it so well. I liked the ending of that movie as well. Okay, another movie that is like so embarrassing that I hadn't watched until now. Thelma and Louise, which I think is actually my favorite movie now. I'm, yeah, it's my favorite movie. I cannot believe it took me this long to watch it. It's so good. It's kind of perfect. Like everything about it is perfect. It is serious. And like trigger warning, there is a essay scene, like part to the movie that I do kind of wish I knew about beforehand because it was kind of intense um but that's kind of like the big thing and that like the big kind of intense thing and then the rest of the movie is really funny but also obviously deep and I love how it just gets like crazier and crazier um like you kind of just you start and it just big thing happens and then you're just skyrocketing I think it had such great things to say I really liked how obviously deeply feminist movie and like a lot there were a lot of different types of men in in the in the story all very different some of them evil you know, you know like on the spectrum of like good intentions bad intentions I watched I watched the boy and the heron I had a good time it was a great Studio Ghibli movie. It hit all the things you want from that from a movie like that. It was more like it kind of felt like an odyssey. It felt very grand and like long, um, not in a bad way, but I don't know. I really liked it. Um, it was really beautiful. I loved the like really detailed domestic scenes. I feel like a lot of people maybe didn't like it. That's what I was hearing, but I don't know. I feel like I'm not super in tune with like the Studio Ghibli world. And like, I don't know if, I really like the movies I've watched, but I don't know like the discourse. And then I watched All of Us Strangers. I actually did not like this movie, hot take. Um, it was really good up until the ending. I think the ending ruined it. Like, it, it, I knew it was gonna be a sad movie. I was ready to cry. I cried. I think the like, um, the aspects of like the parental grief um, are done so well. So yeah, it just, it broke me. I loved it. The ending of kind of like, I don't want to spoil it, but I think the ending put it to a level of despair that felt really, what is it, gratuitous or just kind of like, no, it I, like it cheapened the whole thing for me. Um, yeah, I don't know. It Things can be really sad, but there needs to be like the tiniest sliver of hope. Um, yeah. Vlog. You can enter now. You can Vlog. go in. Do you want me to for your YouTube? <laughs>